nothing in their backgrounds that would suggest, you know, something like that would, would happen. I, I was at a loss. They were pretty darn good kids. These boys weren't criminals. They didn't have records. And, you know, for something like this to happen to, to the boys and to the school, of course, it was, a, it was a big loss at the time. We were in shock. I mean, we did not expect that from our son ever. It's like we woke up in a nightmare. Everything in our family was geared towards our kids to be successful. It was just uh, a moment in which we lost them. Spencer, thank you for waiting. We've been very impressed with your portfolio and the exceptional commendations of your teachers, but now we're hoping to find out a little bit more about you personally. Um, like my family background stuff? Whatever you think is most relevant. Just tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, my name is Spencer Reinhardt. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, and I'm 30 years old for another less than a month, I guess. My father, he is uh, an engineer. My mom is a uh, stay-at-home mom, I guess. Let me stop you there. It's great. I suppose what we'd really like to know is about you. Like uh, hobbies and, and stuff? What do you hope to express with your work? I mean, who are you as an artist? Strides for the generosity of the generous. Yeah. Yeah. The humility of the humble. The honorable man is no. Growing up, I had a, a desire for some kind of 
life-altering experience. I started to read about other artists. They were always affected by some kind of tragedy in their life and had to suffer a great deal. Van Gogh ended up killing himself. Monet went blind. I felt like they understood something more about life that I wasn't getting to experience. Art has to be about more than just my life is great and I'm really good at drawing. about time. I left you like a zillion messages. You haven't left me a message in weeks, Warren. Anyway, do you want to do something? I think I'm going to go to bed. I'm coming over. Seriously, man? Fuck fraternities. The reason to be a part of that is so one day you can walk in the door of an office you never want to go in to see a guy you never want to meet, all in the hopes that he might give you a job you never want to fucking do. Something I've often thought about is how my life would have been different if I hadn't met Warren. So this is the... Uh... Dinosaur T-Rex trying to turn off a ceiling fan. Warren was definitely somebody that my mom did not want me to be friends with. We were not thrilled with the relationship with Warren, but we accepted it because that was his friend. You need to have a little bit of spice in the broth. And Warren probably was that spice. People have said that I was the ringleader, but that's just not true. There was no ringleader. Yes! When I worked here, half of the shit got wasted. Literally thrown in the fucking trash. Hand me the flashlight. Uh, Warren. What are we doing here? Did you know that 40% of restaurant food in America gets thrown in the trash? Just thrown away. We are the fattest mm -hmm. fucking nation on the planet, okay. and we still throw nearly half of our food away. I mean, kids are starving man. in Africa, dude. It's fucking tragic. What the fuck are we gonna do with this, huh? We're saving it from landfill. Do you need avocados? They over No, it's fine. It's fine. Run, 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 run! Don't drop the fucking meat! God damn it! Next time you're gonna get a fucking bullet, Warren! Fuck your mom and her ass! Drive! I'm driving! I'm driving! I'm driving! I'm And I see things mighty clear today. I'm alive! You should just rev up and put them out of their misery. I don't even know what we're doing back here. So did you meet any new cool people over there? No. Bunch of jocks. You? No. Uh-uh. It's not what I thought it would be. You ever wonder he ended up being born you here and not someone else? Or you ever feel like you're you're waiting for something to happen? But you don't know what it is. There's that thing that could uh make your life special. Yeah. Like what? Exactly. Like what? Good news if you woke up wondering if you're living in the right town today, folks. As Forbes magazine votes Lexington 14th best place in the U.S. for business and careers. 
If there is a book you cannot find either on the shelves or on the computer, please make a point of asking a member of the library staff. Through these doors live the special collection. And in future, you will require an appointment to go through these doors, and you will need to be accompanied by a member of the library staff at all times. Someone take the door, thank you. Many of the books in this library have been here since the 19th century, and we are very pleased to be home to some of the rarest editions in the United States. John James Audubon is responsible for this masterpiece here. First edition, Birds of America. He lived here in Kentucky, he had some misfortune in business, went to prison for debt. When he left prison, he headed for the wilderness with a gun, some paint, and a deep desire to paint every bird in America. And when he came back into civilization, he was acclaimed as one of the foremost figures in American art. So how much is it worth? Well, we don't discuss the worth of our books, but I can assure you that Mr. Audubon would never have imagined that his book would be the most valuable in existence. Now, most of you are familiar with this book, arguably among the most important ever written, Darwin's On the Origin of Species. Please look at line number 10 and tell me what you see. Species is spelled wrong. That's correct. Species is spelled wrong. Will you be joining us, sir? I'm pretty sure he told me about it at Rich's party. I remember it being cold. Book? In what world can a book be worth $12 million? It's not really a book. It's more like a collection of paintings. I think I told him about it in the car. Maybe November, it was cold. I still don't understand how a book could be worth $12 million. It's like if Picasso had a bunch of his paintings in a book. Well, you say it's in the library. It's like what? <clears throat> Sitting on a shelf? No, it's in the uh, special collections room. Which is what, like a vault? More like a secure room with glass cases and stuff. With guards on the doors and shit? No, but obviously you can't just walk in there. They pull in here. Because there's security everywhere? Not that I saw. Whoa. What then? Guys, you have to make an appointment. So this is how you remember? Not exactly. But if this is how Spencer remembers it, then let's go with it. It's $12 million. Could we get it? <laughs> you know, like, what would it take? It would take extraordinary effort to get it, not ordinary effort. <laughs> I think you know what. There's been so much who brought it up, who kind of started it. I feel that he was fishing and that I took the bait. It would be true to say that once Warren latches onto an idea that he's not easily going to let it go.
Look, all I'm saying is that nothing will happen unless you make something happen. We're supposed to be hunter-gatherers, man, and our whole lives are just unwrapping shit. Packaging, packaging, packaging. The illusion of choice. It's bullshit, man. Everyone in here thinks that they're gonna win the lottery, but no one buys a ticket. Well, yeah, a prison would be a nice change of scenery. Well, what about ending up on a fucking boat in the Caribbean at the end of Shawshank Redemption? Oh, my God. What about that? They've been in prison for 20 years. And sorry to burst your bubble, but uh, it doesn't work like that in real life, Warren. Bad guys, they don't get to ride off into the sunset with the money and Wait the second. gold and... Uh, How would we be the bad guys? Uh, we'd be the robbers. Aren't you even curious, in your little, little brain, to find out what would actually happen? Aren't you curious? Find out what? To find out what would really happen in real life. I've lost count. Can you go, man, please? I work here. Yeah, I work Listen here. to me. Come on. Listen to me. I gotta do this. We're gonna need the blueprints. We're gonna need to know the exits and entry points. We're gonna need to know the staff entrances and the fastest way out of the building at any given point in time. What do you say? You don't need blueprints. You can just draw it. There aren't exactly books that instruct you on how to steal art. I want you to go over this thing with me inch by inch. Add or subtract the slightest change, even if it's something as small as the placement of a hot dog stand. 510, tall redhead librarian one, leaves for the evening. Short male administrative assistant returns. Hold the door, please. Many of the books in this library have been here since the 19th Neither of us were really serious about the idea. I, I took it very seriously from the start. Warren, there's no secret knock. Yeah, well, there should be. Hi. You lost your fake ID already, didn't you? Actually, I came to talk to you about something. Were you? Yeah. What's up? What if I had something to get rid of? What thing are you talking about? Something rare. So you're looking for a fence? I'm looking for a guy who's gonna buy something rare. Right. I don't want to hear anything about this, but I know a guy you might be able to talk to, but I only met him once. And I don't know him to vouch for, him, so do you understand? Absolutely, I get it. Okay. <clears throat> He's out of New York. He does not like phone calls. I'm gonna get in touch with him. Where is this? That's a fence. What's a fence? It's a fence. 
offense is somebody who buys stolen shit. I'm supposed to email that guy asking for a meeting and sign off with the name Terry. And he said to never email from the same account twice. How fucking cool is that? Good work. Thank you. Best Terry. Happy? Oh, jeez. Oops. I just don't get, like, what a good faith payment is. I mean, we give them 500 bucks for a meeting. It's so we're serious and not time wasters. I would have thought driving across the country for 12 hours was a good demonstration of that. It's just, just how it's done, man. Oh, you know this from all your previous heists? Would you relax? What would you do with the money? Aren't artists supposed to starve? Only station, back-to-back -back hits from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Many years since I was here, on the street, I was passing my time. Out of Kentucky, nobody knows that we're gone. There was a sense of possibility. Real things were actually starting to happen, and they were, it was changing, changing our lives right, right then. Here I am! I was fearful at the time that if the guy didn't show up, that this fantasy would be over and we'd be going back to Kentucky and things would kind of resume their normal uh, course. And then suddenly, Warren's talking to a guy with a ponytail and a blue scarf. Or was it a purple scarf? The guy was in his 50s, he had white hair, well-dressed. me the piece of paper and that was that he didn't even count the money so what do you say what do you say it wasn't the buyer he gave us a contact the fence so that guy was in the fence I thought you said he was the fence I guess not we just we spent $500 on an email address. Uh, all you have to do is contact this guy. And he said he speaks English. What? He, he's, he's, let's go get some food. Come on, I'm freezing. Uh, why wouldn't he speak English, Warren? Warren. Sir, thank you for your email. I'm afraid we only do business in person, but We'll welcome you and your items in the Netherlands at your earliest convenience. <clears throat> we have to go. To Holland? To the Netherlands. Can you stop? No, I'm not stopping until it's burned. Look, it's evidence. Hot, motherfucker. 
Thank you. Sorry. So, you want to go all the way over there to meet some actual criminals you know nothing about to talk about something we don't even have? Yes. What's your suggestion? Maybe it's time to, uh, to face reality. Maybe it's something we're not able to do. So we're just going to sit here and do nothing? That is so disappointing. I can't even tell you. How about you, Spencer? Are you keeping your game up? Um, not so much. I mean, I'm trying to take the whole art thing seriously. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess somebody has to, huh? But, you know, you want to keep that blood pumping, son. And speaking of which, uh, I ran into Burt Morris last week, and he said you missed a couple of practice games. Yeah. Now, Warren, you're there in a scholarship, and that's what it means. You are there to play. I had it the same way. Jesus Christ. You okay? Nope. Remember, quitters never win, and winners never quit. Uh, yeah, something Thanks. to live by. So how is your mom, Spencer? Uh, she's doing good. Good. You uh, tell her I said hi for me. I will. I need to speak with you, please. What, now, Susan? <clears throat> now? Excuse me, guys. What I want to do is just have dinner with the boys. I'm divorcing your father. Sorry. And then I think I looked over at Spencer and, I mean, who knows if this is how it really went, but he said, I, I remember him being like, well, I should go, man. Do your food, man, seriously. Uh, I'll carry it on with the plan. What are you talking about? Holland. Amsterdam and Ding Dong. Come on, Warren, you know I can't go. Even if I wanted to. Fuck. Look, maybe I can, uh, find some money and put it towards half the ticket. Really? Yeah. But it'll be only you going. Don't you touch me, man. All right, bro. Thanks, brother. Go get him. All right? Yeah. Singing, 
songs of love Then when the hurdy gurdy man came singing Hi, I'm David. I work with Mr. Beckman. Hi. Do you mind if I sit? You guys are the guys that we've You have some on. books, and you have some paintings. That I do. That I do. Now, uh, we have a number of, of, of items pertaining to the existence of which I am here. Um, The books, the autobahns, are very rare. Yes. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. With your piece of paper. W well, uh, I didn't know. Mr. Beckman, is your father? <coughs> no, uh, Mr. Beckman is my employer. <sighs> actually, we are kind of related. He's, uh, he's actually my, my mom's sister's husband, which makes him sort of a uh, uncle. You have authentication. Okay, when you say authentication, we take you mean... items from various sources and we don't inquire where they came from as long as we have authentication with a very famous auction house. Yeah. Um, so you're saying with the correct authentications that these items would be of interest to you? Yeah. So, Mr. Beckman's going to be very pleased about this, by the way. Um, so, can I ask roughly, in terms of, um, it's hard, I imagine, to... How much? Yes. How much? 30 to 40 percent of the valuation price. That's, um, <laughs> millions of dollars, right? <laughs> Yeah! Look, I've been thinking, just, uh, you know, we're gonna need a bigger boat. We're gonna need a bigger boat? I mean, we're gonna need somebody else. Um, why do we need someone else? We need somebody with skills that we don't have. Somebody who's good with logistics and... Chess. Accepted accounting principles. Statements on auditing. So in 1992, we get SAS 82. Anyone dare to explain the significance of this one? Mr. Borsig. I was majoring in accounting because I wanted a career at the FBI. At the time, that was only one of the two majors they accepted straight out of college. Eric was a gentleman. The good student gave me no pause or concern uh, whatsoever. I always felt like I was um, kind of a loner for some reason. Um, yeah, um, SAS 82. States that auditors have the duty to actively look for fraud, not just report it if they find it. 
That's correct. Except in reality, it doesn't always work like that, does it? Arthur Anderson. Remember them? Auditors Danron? Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Borsig. So, in 2002, that leads us to SAS 99, which... Don't cancel me. What the fuck are you doing here? I need to talk to you, but not here. Uh, it's the declaration of fraud in the financial Warren and I had lost touch. We had a falling out. It had been about three months since we'd last spoken. I thought that we weren't speaking. What? Wait. No. Uh, no, 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 no. Can, can we just agree to put all that stupid shit behind us, please? I mean, no. Hey, so what's up, man? What's with all the mystery? I'm here to talk to you about something deadly serious. I figured you must want something. Actually, I came to offer you something. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. There's no one else I could trust with this. You're either in or you're out right now. How can I tell you if I'm in or I'm out without you telling me the first thing about what I might be in or out of? I would just need you to say in principle, okay? Because this might be something not exactly legal. And there's a chance that we would have to leave everything behind. Okay, when you say not legal. I'm gonna say this one time and one time only. You're either in or you're out. Right now. I'm gonna need more than this one. Not till you commit. This would be something dangerous and very fucking exciting that I need you to be a part of. This could change everything. This is your red pill or blue pill moment, my friend. How's college? Would we have to go tonight? I think I was just saying yes because I knew that I wanted to um, regain our friendship more than anything. So what's your plan? <clears throat> it's partly where you come in. Just take a look for me, please. It can't be done at night. What? What's well, the one time of day when no one's supposed to be in the building? It'd be impossible to get in without triggering the alarms. It would have to be done during the day. You see? I knew you were the man for this. Look at him. He's like a fish in water. Sure. Let's just walk in there in broad daylight and rob the place. Oh, yeah, well, while you're at it, you're going to dynamite the canteen, right? How many cameras did you say were in the special collections room? Because they're gonna be watching everything from the campus safety office, the cameras, the alarms. They're gonna know who's coming in. And... What are you doing? I'm taking notes. This is good stuff. Are you fucking retarded? No. Why don't you just email the FBI and ask them where they'd like us to leave our fingerprints? You can make it easy for them. Guys, we need to find out who's watching the special collections room when. I concur with that. Come in. Hey. Take a seat, Warren. Okay. I assume you know why you're here. Uh, not really, sir. All right, Mr. Lipkin. You came here on an athletic scholarship. Perhaps it doesn't seem like a particularly big deal to you. No, sir, it does. Well, son, you have a funny way of showing it. Because I warned you countless times what would happen if you continued to fail to show up. Assistant coach suspects drugs or alcohol may be involved. Now, it pains me to see you lose this scholarship but it's gonna pain and probably embarrass your father a whole lot more. So you might wanna reflect on what that kind of disappointment will mean for him. Yeah. That will be a disappointment. Thing is, 
I worked to get on that team since I was about five. And I have absolutely no idea why. To be honest, sir, I think this whole place is a disappointment. I think you are a disappointment. And I think this whole goddamn town is a disappointment. Get out. That it? The cameras aren't cameras. They're motion detectors. We're gonna email the library asking to have the Autobahn and the illuminated manuscript on display when we arrive. They will be here and here. Can you please not touch the model? Thanks. As I was saying, Back here is target priority number one, the Autobahn. Now, directly behind the display case is a doorway which leads to a staff elevator that goes straight to the basement. Now, once in the basement, we can access the fire exit at the side of the building. Now, the, where's the librarian? Thank you. Just watch. The librarian is the single biggest risk to this entire operation. She needs to become a non-factor as soon as possible. Now, once inside the room, you two will bag up the smaller books, and I'll unlock the cases containing the Autobahn and the Darwin. Should be in and out in less than three or four minutes. Good afternoon. Come in. How are you? I'm Betty Jean Gooch, and I will need your names for the log, please. I am uh, Spencer Green. Oh! Satisfaction in me. A little more bite, a little less spark. A little less fight, a little more spark. I close your mouth and open up your heart, and baby, satisfy me. Satisfy me, baby. Come on, baby, I'm tired of talking. Grab your coat and let's start walking. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Uh, what? Doesn't work. We need two guys, at least, in the room. Then you need a third guy downstairs in the library keeping lookout. Then we're gonna have to have a getaway driver. Who's your driver? Three of us isn't enough. He's right. I just don't see how any of this is gonna work. I mean, does it seem realistic or... Well, you got a better idea, Spence? No. Fuck! I was torn between the desire to keep the adventure going and waiting for the insurmountable obstacle that would stop everything in its tracks and return things to normal. We need someone else that we can trust. Wait, 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 wait. Someone else? You want to bring in someone else? You got a better idea? Who else can we trust with this? Someone with a fast car or the money to get one. I'd only met him a couple of times in high school. I never really got along too well with Chaz. The decision to bring on the fourth person came from Eric. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Warren's idea. I definitely wouldn't have ever suggested we bring Chaz on. My name is Charles Thomas Allen II, but people call me Chaz. My dad built me for success. I started my first company at 12 years old. At 16, bought my first rental property. He's been a little entrepreneur as long as I can remember. You know, mowing grass. Uh, you know, he followed his dad around. He was a little Tommy, just followed him around all the time, wanting to be, you know, business and, you know, do everything his dad did. Chaz, interestingly enough, I knew his dad. <laughs> uh, he worked out at the same gym that I did for a while. Just a wonderful person. Uh, you know, I mean, a, a prince of, a, of an individual. I think the qualities that we thought Chaz could bring was money. Warren, stop Sorry. doing that shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. Can we talk to you about something? Yeah, what's up? Once I realized they were serious you... about the plan, I, I thought they were smoking too much. I think you guys are smoking too much. And I thought they were likely to get themselves in a lot of trouble and get caught. And likely to get yourselves in a lot of trouble and get caught. Chaz, mm -hmm. you really need to see how easy this is going to be. Wait, what the fuck are you guys even talking about here? Talking about $12 million in rare books and only one old lady guarding it. Name first. Eric, Mr. Black. Spencer, Mr. Green. Mr. Yellow, it's me. Chaz, Mr. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking really, dude? What? You're making me Mr. Pink? What? <laughs> what's wrong, Mr. Pink? You know exactly what's wrong with Mr. Pink, okay? I'm sorry, can I just say how dumb this entire thing is, okay? Because in the motion picture, the whole point of the names was so that nobody knew what the others were called, so they couldn't give each other up. Relax, okay? It's just protocol so we don't address each other by our names during the robbery, okay? Mm -hmm. No names, Mr. Pink. It's fucking ridiculous, man. And they all die in the end of that movie. Spencer was Mr. Green because he smoked lots of green. Eric was Mr. Black because he said his soul was black. I was Mr. Yellow because I was, I was my mom's sunshine. And I named Chaz Mr. Pink just to fuck with him. I'm not gonna be Mr. Pink. I'm gonna be any color but pink. <laughs> it's probably my least favorite Tarantino film. Okay, housekeeping first, Mr. Green. You will see to the disguises, makeup, prosthetics, outfits, wigs, etc. Costume party? Making a movie. Mr. Black, your first task is to find a reliable getaway vehicle, a Ford or similar, nothing flashy, which you will purchase using cash and a fake ID. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Pink, your first job is to identify the quickest route from the library to the drop-off point here and then practice it over and over again until it becomes second nature. <laughs> 14 minutes, 18 seconds, mostly green lights. Mr. Yellow, that's me, of course. I will make the authentication appointment in New York for the weekend immediately following the robbery, meaning that even if the books are reported missing, they won't yet show up on the National Index of Stolen Art. Once we have the authentication, we will arrange a rendezvous with the buyers in the Netherlands. Dear sir, my name is Walter Beckman. I am a collector of rare manuscripts based in Texas. I would like to arrange an appraisal of some of the items in my collection. Now. I have emailed the library to make an appointment to view the books on the penultimate day of term. That's eight days from now. The library will be almost empty as everyone will be in finals. I have an exam that day. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. I have art and history. Exactly. What do you mean exactly? I mean, who's going to suspect a group of robbers who all happen to be in exams that day? Mr. Green, would you like to walk us through the disguises? So, the idea is we go in disguised 
as old men. I'm sorry, why the fuck would we go disguised as old men? Because being old is the closest thing to being invisible. I have a question. I'm still unclear on what's gonna happen with the librarian. Who's gonna be dealing we with that? We should probably decide that by drawing lots or a, a vote or something. Well, I vote to have nothing to do with it whatsoever. Yeah, me too. I don't want to do that. I'm not gonna. Hey, whoa. What the fuck? Obviously, nobody wants to do it. That's why we need to decide it by drawing lots or a vote or something. Isn't there maybe a, a way to make her not be there on the day? No. Of course there isn't a fucking way. That's how you get to be in the room. Someone has to be in there with you. That's how you get to be in the fucking room! What if she starts screaming or something? Yeah, or has a fucking heart attack, man. Yeah. Guys, when this is all over, we're gonna send her an anonymous package filled with thousands of fucking dollars. She's gonna be happy. Look, I'm not doing it, okay? I'm not comfortable with it. I'll do it. I'll fucking do it. There was no obstacle. Nothing was gonna prevent us from doing it. We had started it and it could be done. There were so many opportunities looking back where I could have completely, that I could have gotten out or or changed what we were doing, and, and I didn't. Duct tape. Check. Change of clothes. Check. Sheet. Check. Ski mask. Ski masks. Cell phones. Zip ties. Taser. Check. No taser. Shit. Whose job was it to order the taser? I believe it was your job. Well, fuck, I can't think of everything. Open your books. You have two hours to complete two of the three essay questions. When I give the signal, you may turn over your papers. Any problems, raise your hand. And begin. This could be just what your mom's looking for. Black Cobra stun pen. How long would that disable someone for? Uh, hey, listen, I gotta borrow the van. Pencils down. Close your test and exit the room. Your scores will be posted by the end of next week. You're seven minutes late. Let's go. Close your books. Please pass them to your left and leave in an orderly fashion. Eleven minutes.
fucking really? <clears throat> there he is. Like clockwork. Don't even fucking think about throwing up in this car, Spencer. Remember, you're old. There's people everywhere. Just stick to the plan. Let's do this. Who's up there, all right? There's a man. There's a it doesn't matter who's up there. There's four of them. We're not going to die on four fucking librarians. What is going on? There's a fucking meeting up there or something, okay? There's four librarians. We can't die on four I'm not, people. I'm not staying, okay? They're all looking at me. I'm losing the side, bro. Okay, listen. Everyone, just chill out, all right? We haven't done anything. We can wait, all right? They're not going to be up there, bro. Okay. Who 
ones to wait. get out of that situation without having done anything wrong was an incredible feeling. The plan was off, there was there was going to be no heist and it was glorious. The sun was shining and it was like a new a new beginning. I don't get to control who gets to be in the goddamn fucking room. That's it. After all that, that's it. That's the end of it. It's over. Pathetic. Did you not think for a moment? Did you it's fucking think? Fucking fucking to call me fucking pathetic. All this shit. Fuck. Maybe we dodged the bullet. We didn't dodge anything because we didn't fucking do anything. We just fucked it up. Fuck. Pull in here. I need something to drink. Hey, you got a pay phone? I just called the library. We're back on tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. She says there are no other appointments scheduled. Hey, sweetie, not hungry? Just tired. Fixing arms and stuff. Honey, you gotta take better care of yourself. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Bring your money. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah. I just, uh, I just remembered I have uh, an exam tomorrow and study for it, so. You okay, champ? Spencer. I can't see it ending well. I just can't go back in there. Okay, well, just, uh, look, today was bad luck, but we got a trial run, okay? Now we can make adjustments, and, dude, nothing bad is gonna happen. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Stop nobody's saying gonna that, Warren! No one's gonna get hurt. How do you know no one's gonna get hurt? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about my family, okay? They're good people, and they don't deserve it. I even thought about, I mean, what could happen, like, if it goes wrong, our futures? Which fucking future are you worried about? The one that's fucking indistinguishable from everyone else's? Where you fucking beaver away to get the shit you're told you need to have by some fucking asshole who's gonna tell you what a great big success you are once you get it all? 
Spence, you are the one who wanted to fucking change. You started this whole thing, remember? Huh? Yeah, I do. I think we should just quit while we're ahead. Dude, this isn't fucking ahead. This is just more of the same shit. Nothing has changed. What has changed? Tell me. I'm just not cut out for it, Warren. Okay? I'm not cut out for it, so I'm not... I'm done. Look, you just... I'm done. You really want to come all this way and not find out what happens next? I mean, tell me this hasn't been the time of your fucking life. Man, I don't want you waking up 10 years from now wondering what could have happened and who you could have been. Right. I'll see you around, man. One day you'll be dead! You can go through life with this expectation that something fantastic is gonna happen, something life-altering that's gonna make your life different and unique. I realized that I had to actually make something happen on my own. So, Plan B. We've agreed that Chaz will be the driver. He stays in the van with the engine running and the doors open. Myself and Eric will be the only ones to go inside the library. No disguises. It just creates unwanted attention. What about him? Spencer will be outside on lookout. What? Why? Well, he can't go inside. People will recognize him. We can't risk that. So then who's going to be on lookout inside the library? You. You're gonna be downstairs until I call you to come back up the books. You know that I can't be involved in dealing with the librarian, right? You get that? Like I said, I will take care of that, and then I will call you once she's been, she's neutralized. This time, it's gonna work. Okay, so when I go up, she'll be dealt with, it'll be done. Yes? Warren, that's what I just said, isn't it? Yeah.
Beckman. Yes. Oh. Hi. Walter Beckman. Yes, Betty Jean Gooch. Nice to see you. Nice Come to in, see please. You I have to say, I expected someone much older. <laughs> yeah, you never know, do you? No, I never know. Now I'm going to ask you to sign in for the log by your printed name. Right there. Thank you. Thank you. And then if you would date it, please. And how was your day going thus far? It's going fine, thank you. Um, I'm very sorry about the other evening, or the other day, sorry. We, uh, I had a family emergency I had to take oh, care of. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I trust everything is okay. It's okay now, thank you. Good. Well, what you have requested to see uh, are among our most treasured items. I have laid out the illuminated manuscript and the Hortus Sanitatus. Please remember to use the gloves at all times while touching any of the pages. Sure. Uh, is this a personal interest of yours, or are you working on some kind of a project? Uh, I just um, heard a great deal about them. Huh. Well, as you can see, one of the volumes of the Audubon is displayed here. This case will remain locked at all times. However, if you do wish to see some of the other plates, I can help you to turn some of the pages, if time permits. Miss Gooch, uh, my friend, he's right there. Oh. Thank you so much. Sure. Hello. Come in, please. I will need your name for the logbook. You need to sign in, John. 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 Rutherford. Rutherford. Please sign by the. <laughs> It's gonna hurt you. You keep struggling, it's gonna fucking hurt more. Mm. Shut up! Oh, Zip tie her legs. Oh, God help me. Oh. Zip tie her fucking legs right now! Oh, don't tie my hands. Please, I can't. I God can't. damn it. I didn't die. Fuck the fucking gloves. What are you doing? I just Fuck the gloves. Let's go. I Oh, I can't breathe. You're hurting me. 
Why? Why are you doing this? Why? Give the box. We want the box. Not you. You good? You good? Find the keys! Find the fucking keys! Wake the fuck up! There's no keys. What? There's no keys. There's no fucking keys. I can't find any fucking keys. Find the fucking keys! Damn it! Damn it! Fucking keys! Get the fucking door. Get it out of the case. I'm done touching her. That's it. Fuck, I'm, to get the I'm not touching her anymore. I'm done touching her. I don't give a fuck. I'm not fucking touching her anymore. Good enough. This is good enough. The Darwin. No, fuck get the Darwin, Darwin man. Yeah. Fucking leave the Darwin. Fuck. Let's fucking go, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, shit. Where's the exit? 
This is really fucking bad, Warren. Oh, shit! Where the fuck are you ended? I don't know! Uh -huh. The fuck? What are we gonna do? I have to make a run for it. What? Take a run for it. What do you mean make a run? We make a fucking run for it. Fucking see this up. Fuck, man, this is bad. talking about? I'm not getting out of the fucking car right Dude, here. they're gonna be looking for a gray van with three guys in it, okay? Get out. Who the fuck is this, man? I'm get the fuck out, out man. Hey, I'm not moving this car with the three of us in it. Get out. I'm not getting out of here. Get out, man. Crazy. I'll come back for you. I will come back for you in my car. Just get the fuck out. You fucking promise. I You're swear to fucking God, I will come back. Get the fuck out. Eric, get the fuck out. Fucking door. Don't get the fuck. Get the fuck out. Take your fucking bag. Close the fucking doors. Hurry the fuck up.
there is a special collection room inside of this library. Now, we're told that some of the books inside that room date back to the 1700s. They're very rare and expensive. This morning, two men took advantage of that. This is Dave Lachinsky reporting from Transylvania University, where the audacious robbery was carried out in broad daylight oh, today. Uh, two Turn men it up. forced their way into the special collections room, home to some of America's most valuable books. Police say the group knew exactly what they were looking for. Officials are helping police search for the two men who stole the books and the two men who drove the getaway vehicle. Described How by witnesses quiet. as a gray Dodge minivan, license plate number 331094. Police are appealing for anyone yeah, who believes they've been the How do they know there were four of us? They don't know shit. For the perpetrators. Once inside they got plates the library, from a different car. They violently restrained a female librarian, leaving her bound... Absolutely stunning, aren't they? And did Mr. Beckman? Did Mr. Beckman give you any information regarding the provenance of the books? Only that he inherited them many years ago uh, and wishes to realize their value through a private sale. Right. They're extremely rare. Yeah, his his uh, his eyes are failing. He says the books no longer receive the attention they fully deserve. And does he possess any documentation pertaining to his ancestors' acquisition of the books? Um, I mean, they've been in his family for generations, so there's really no documentation to speak of. Well, they're exquisite, and. Uh... Undoubtedly genuine. So, let me talk this over with Mr. Leckie, and then we'll be in touch regarding an estimate and steps toward a private sale. Not today. Not today. I'm afraid Mr. Leckie is out of the office all day. Well, you see, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Melanie Halloran. Miss Halloran, we were really hoping to supply Mr. Beckman with a, um, estimate today mm -hmm. that's that's why we came up here i wouldn't be able to give you that without mr lecky's sign off there no one else who could maybe take a look today as i say this is really thomas's department and he'll be back here tomorrow is there a number we can reach you on while you're in town ah oh, fuck so well and the mean guy wasn't there, so we had to talk to the uh, junior executive. Uh, deputy. 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 Uh -huh. And uh, she said what we got is very valuable. And uh, just got to wait for the main guy to get back. So we're going to wait for the call, and then can get in touch with the, with the meeting. When you say wait uh, for the call, you mean at the hotel, right? I'm gonna call myself. Wait, turn the engine off. Ring, ring your cell phone number. Ring it now. Fucking ring it, Spencer. Okay, you know what? I'll ring it for you, dipshit. Let's see. Does that sound like a fucking art dealer to you, huh? <laughs> Look, Chaz, we can change the message. Hey, 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 shut up, Eric! All right, shut the fuck up!
You need to go back in there and get whatever piece of paper that has your phone number on it back. How? Right fucking How? now, because I shit you not, that number's gonna put us all in jail, you fucking little asshole. You just need to calm down. Then. Hey, don't yes. fucking tell me to calm down, Warren. You, you, you guys are sending us to jail, you fucking idiots. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Do you not understand that? You're too fucking stupid. You're so smart, Chaz. Why didn't you go in there? What I can do, bitch. What do you got, Mr. Pink? Oh, oh, fuck! Huh? Okay, okay, what? Chad, what are you fuck, doing? You just call me? What oh, the you fuck, call me a man? fucking bitch? Chad. Fuck. What, where's the talk now, bitch? Huh? This is my life you are fucking with, man, okay? Th th this isn't some fucking game. You gotta go back in there and get that number back. You gotta go back in there and get that fucking number back right now, Spencer. Go! Chaz, man, you know we can't go back in there. I don't give a fuck what you think you know. You've killed us. You shot us all in the fucking head. You guys are around, I guess. See you, man. Call you later. To have this, this need to know what is on the other side of that line and Realizing the only way to actually do that is to cross it. There's never a point in your life after that where you haven't already crossed that line. Um, you know, it's, it was, it was definitely a terrifying thing. I just think that I remember hearing that scream in my head over and over again, just the scream of the librarian. What have I just done? I felt so confident this was gonna be what I needed. Is this really, did I just do something horrible? Did I just hurt someone forever? Did I just, um, just take part in something awful? You know? You know, I'm sorry I hadn't been to your games lately. I just... It's okay. How's your form? Never better. How's the a new place? Well, it's great, you know. It's actually just very convenient it's near the shops and close to work and everything. We tried to say things like, we're not gonna hurt anybody. We're just gonna try to scare and, and get in and get out. We're gonna call the cops afterwards. We're gonna talk to her and tell her we're not gonna hurt her. But we did. <laughs> and we just tried to get past it, but there's no...
There's no real getting past it. It's the middle of the fucking night. We're in, it's, uh, it's uh, worse than we thought. What are you talking about? We, uh, we used uh, the same email address to, uh, to make the library appointment that we used to email Christie's, man. They'll find the email. They're gonna find Halloran. Find me, us, my phone number. <sighs> Jess was right, man. Jess was right, Warren. Dude, you're overthinking this. Go back to bed, all right? Paranoia will destroy it.
sunshine Who in the night time Who by high ordeal Who by common trial Who in your merry, merry month of May Who by very slow decay And who shall I say Is calling Who in these realms of love? Who by something blood? Who by avalanche? Who by powder? Who for his greed? Who for his hunger? And who shall I say? After pleading guilty to robbery, conspiracy, and theft of major artworks, Spencer Reinard, Eric Borsuk, Charles Allen, and Warren Lipka now know their fate. A federal judge sentenced them each to seven years in a federal prison after the four plotted for months to steal millions of dollars worth of manuscripts and sketches from Transylvania University's special collections. You're taught your entire life that what you do matters and that you're special. And that there are things you can point towards that would, would show that you're special, that it shows that you're different, when in, in all reality, those things don't matter and you're not special. And so the idea that we were doing this extraordinary thing absolutely appealed to us, appealed to me. Looking back on it, I've often wondered which events I remember from Warren's point of view or I remember from my own, and if it was easier to choose one over the other because of what it provided for us. I don't remember if the guy I saw in Central Park was someone that I saw or somebody that Warren told me I saw. All right, bro. Go get him. Yeah. All I remember from his Amsterdam trip was dropping him off at the airport and picking him up. definitely don't have evidence or actual proof that that Warren went to Amsterdam. Over the years, I've definitely come to think that Warren's whole story about meeting with an Amsterdam buyer, that most likely he just made the whole thing up. I guess they just have to take my word for it. There was a version of the story that I wanted to believe and that I chose to believe. And oftentimes, it was Warren's. But 
the pain that I caused both to my family and to BJ are, were never worth the adventure that we felt at the time or the, the change in our life that we were craving. I think they wanted things to come easy for them. They did not want to work for a transformative experience. They didn't want to help other people to achieve a transformative experience. I find them all very selfish. And I still have trouble figuring out how a person crosses a line in their own mind to be willing to hurt another person to get what they want. And I think that's, once you've crossed that line, I think it's a dangerous line to cross. It makes me wonder if they really know why they did it. Was it a huntsman or a player that made you pay the cost that now assumes relaxed positions and prostitutes your loss? Were you tortured by your own thirst in those pleasures that you seek that made you Tom the curious that makes you James the weak? And you claim you got something going Something you call unique But I've seen your self-pity showing As the tears roll down your cheeks Soon you know I'll leave you 
And I'll never look behind Cause I was born for the purpose That crucifies your mind So can't convince your mirror As you've always done before Giving substance to shadows Giving substance evermore And you assume you got something to offer Secret shiny in you But how much of you is repetition That you didn't whisper to him too 